When you receive your SAS by system, you'll arrive in a box very similar to this. We are probably made in the USA. We'll open this box up. There'll be two sheets on the inside. First is just the inf information on a flyer. Contact information is in the upper left. The second sheet is uh, basically a quick how-to of both how to set up your account and how to claim your device on each side. And we'll cover that in a future video as well. Within the box, there'll be a SAFSPY sensor hub and a tank level sensor and additional components underneath this packaging. So let's pull that packaging out. We'll set that to the side. We'll have a sensor hub, a plastic bag with four uh, different pieces in that that we'll cover. There'll be a power cable um, with a USB connector on one side and a plug on the other that goes into the sensor hub with a USB adapter, all included. And then finally, the tank level sensor. Let's set that box to the side and I'll go over it in a little bit more detail. So first, let's talk about the sensor hub. This is an all-in-one device that monitors vacuum, tank level, temperature, and is also cellular connected. We also have add-on options to turn relays on and off, as well as an antenna to allow this to talk to sensor nodes. This is our standard offering without those options. On the left-hand side is where the temperature sensor is. This little um, you know, stainless steel stubby is where, the, where it will read temperature. By reading outside of the enclosure, it can be more accurate, reading air temperature. Below that is an on and off button. The on and off button doesn't stay in or, or come out, We'll simply push it, you know, push it in, the light turns off, then it's off. We'll push it in again. If the light turns on, then you just turn it on. When you do turn it on, it'll be solid green for about five seconds. Then it's going to start flashing. It's going to flash at a you know, medium pace while it's attempting to connect to the cell tower. Anywhere from 30 seconds to even five or 10 minutes, especially that first time you connect, it'll uh, be flashing like this. Once it's getting close to connecting, when it's negotiating with the cell tower, it'll begin flashing rapidly like you see there. It'll do that for a few seconds. And then it'll go into this, uh, we refer to it as breathing, where it gets brighter and brighter and dimmer and dimmer at about every two to three seconds, about the pace of a slow breath. So that's why we refer to it as breathing. This is when it's properly connected. So it's connected to the cell tower and connected to the internet with this breathing type color. And at this point, it is able to send out information, and you're also able to take readings on demand. We'll cover the modes of operation in a further de uh, video as well. If we continue on the side here, next we have a 516 port to measure vacuum. What you t traditionally do to, um, to hook up vacuum is you want to measure vacuum right at your releaser, at least if your sensor hub is located near your collection tank. These uh, additional four pieces to make that a little bit easier to, to connect and also for um, during the off season to, you know, to bring the sensor hub in and to set it back up again. This first connection is a quarter inch NPT, which you can screw right into the uh, top side of your releaser. Um, you can either add a new tap uh, for this quarter inch NPT fitting or even use your existing uh, port there that's traditionally meant for a vacuum gauge. I personally will use this and then tee off for my vacuum gauge. So here, I would attach tubing onto that, onto that um, area, and you can run now the sensor hub really anywhere away from where this tubing is. For this video, we're just using a short piece here, but it could be even 50 feet or more um, away. So we'll connect that piece up. We'll use a short piece on the sensor hub itself, connect that up to, uh, to the sensor hub. Many times you want to push that well past the barb, but for this demonstration, just to make it easy to disconnect, I'll just leave it like that. Now at this point, we want to connect these two lines together. And just to make it easy, um, we have these additional fittings. This is effectively just a quick connect for 516's tubing. They'll screw together like that and be a nice tight vacuum seal. And then when you need, you can also plug off that vacuum. So what I like to do is connect it like this. I'll connect it with the plug, just so I know I'm doing it the right way. And I'll put this with the plug onto the side that's coming from the releaser. Once again, I'll just do it loose so it's um, just for this demonstration, but you can certainly put that on farther. And I'll do the other side and uh, next to the sensor hub. And then I can remove the, remove the plug, make sure that you keep that for safekeeping. 
for the end of the season. And then I can just screw that right together. And now my vacuum line is connected. Once again, this piece is completely optional just to make it easier for you to uh, disconnect and reconnect uh, during the off season. So I'll just go re remove that just for the rest of this demo demonstration video. So that's the 516 port. Next, what we have is where the power is connected. What comes standard with the sensor hub is this cable here. It's a standard wall charger and then a standard USB adapter. You can uh, use this wall charger. If you have power, um, you can always leave this hooked up all the time so, that, so you don't have to worry about recharging it. If you don't have power, then you can maybe use a USB battery pack um, to, you know, to recharge the sensor hub during the middle of the season. Um, you, we also have a 12 volt alligator clips or a solar panel option as well. And they all plug into the same port. So, uh, then I'll just plug in right in the bottom and then I can screw it together. And then that's not going to fall out at all. One consideration or one common mistake is you'll just plug it in like this. You think it's plugged in all the way. You really want to make sure you, you, you go there and you push it in and even screw it all the way in. That way we know that connection is being made and it's a nice secure connection. Um, if you don't have constant power, especially if you mount it outside, we have this that uh, piece there just to protect the connection a little bit as well. The next connector you see here is for the tank level sensor. This tank level sensor comes with a 10 foot cable um, by default, or a standard I should say. We do have 15 foot extensions as well. The extensions all plug in the exact same way that you see here. So this is um, just a um, circular connector. We'll get it close and then you may want to just rotate it until it lines up properly. And then once it lines up, you can just screw that right together. And now it's a nice secure fit. We can route the cable where we need. Once again, about 10 feet long. And then here is just a standard bracket. We can loosen that up, attach it where we need clamp it down, make sure it's level, and we're good to go. And we'll cover uh, additional details of calibration of the tank sensor in a future video. So unplug that for now. A few other uh, key points is this uh, sensor hub, the enclosure itself, is weather, uh, weather tight. It can be mounted outside or inside. So it can be exposed to the rain, the sleet, the snow, uh, with no problem at all. You can put this on a tree outside. Um, or other, you know, or mounted inside if you prefer that as well. One consideration, you will get improved signal strength if you're mounted outside. So many people will mount this right outside their pump house um, to get maximum signal strength. A couple options I also want to cover is this is a, tank level, or a temperature sensor. We have just a stubby. You may um, elect to go with a, a three foot cable that you see here. That three foot cable can be swapped out. We have additional video of how to swap that out. Um, what this allows you to do is mount this inside, but still read outside temperature or vice versa. If you want to mount this outside to get um, the best signal strength possible, then you can read inside temperature to make sure your, your pump house isn't freezing. One other option that just to, um, to cover as well, we all have, also have a relay option. If you, if you opt in for that relay option, You'll get an additional port here on the bottom. It looks very similar to the tank level sensor because it's really the same connector. So that's why we properly labeled this is where the relay goes, this is where the tank level goes. And that relay will plug in the exact same way. You'll, you'll, if you um, opt in for the ability to talk to sensor nodes or upgrade to that option, we'll have this additional antenna as well. This allows it to communicate to additional sensor nodes. The biggest thing I want to just mention is we um, anytime the device is on, we want to make sure this antenna is attached. So we'll attach that antenna and then we'll turn it on. And that's the quick unpackaging of the SASPI sensor hub. Check out our additional how-to videos for more information.